Burber ding, Burber ding, Burger King. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Lone University. Today, I'm taking on another request to check out Ryan Martini of Mudvayne and their breakout single, Dig, from 2000. This is off the album LD50. And upon a little YouTube search, I realized there was actually a Ryan's Angle video. I'm not aware of this. It's been a very long time since I've listened to Dig, other than the clip circulating, the Burber Ding, Burber Ding, Burger King, all the memes that were going around. And that's such a signature bass intro, but I'm excited to check it out and really put the bass line under the microscope and see some of his really innovative techniques happening. So let's jump in. Using my Warwick thumb today, just like he is, this is Mudvayne Dig. Love this. Ooh. Really plucking through them. Woo. Loving this Ryan's angle. I forgot how funky this was. Real rooted in those pop tritones up here. And that signature Warwick tone just kind of gurgling underneath. Really like it. It's a heavy metal song, but he's got these funk bass lines. You just didn't really hear that. It's almost kind of Les Claypoolish in a way, but the harsh vocals take it a whole different direction. I just, that gurgly Warwick throaty tone, it's real accentuated around 300 hertz, is really crushing through. It's just a really cool texture in a band like this. Popping it. Love those faces. <laughs> this is so fun. Woo! I'm going to go down and put that in slow motion. That's really cool. Just some popping, slapping, going through the string a little bit, grabbing, popping with both index and ring. I mean, he's really got all phalanges in play here. Ooh, kind of strumming here. Talk about that for a sec. Kind of strumming it there. Really interesting. I know he has some kind of flamenco stuff. Uh, I've seen a bit of his newer band, Soften the Glare, but that's another playthrough I need to check out and do for this series. But what's interesting is he's doing a lot of that showmanship stuff. You know, it, it looks like there's a lot of motion going on, but he actually has really, really great technique. And, you know, this is great showmanship. He would play like that on stage, just really popping, just exaggerated pops. But you'll notice when he goes back to fingerstyle, he jumps in and just mounts that thumb and gets really controlled attacks. So he knows exactly what he's doing. And this is just, you don't hear bass in this kind of mainstream metal, especially around that era, 2000. I think he really paved the way for a lot of bass players um, in this genre, the kind of the, I wouldn't call this new metal. I don't even know what genre Mudvayne are, just heavy metal. The Wikipedia page says something about math rock, math metal, uh, really have their own unique sound. And I'm really surprised they're back playing today after a long hiatus. It's really cool. I'm going to go back and catch some of this breakdown in the middle. Let's see what's going on here. Such an unmistakable bass tone. Warwick. Big triplets. Ooh. Real cool hybrid 
kind of strumming up here, a little a little farther away from the pickups, you get a bit of smoother sound, and he'll jump back and do finger style. So that switching of techniques, he's got it really under control. He's moved it up high, down here now. Really, really nice. Nice, like, fifths, power chords on the bass. He's doing a lot of stuff here that you just, lots of different techniques, slap pop, uh, this strumming, and a lot of double stops. And the coolest thing about what I'm hearing so far is that there's real, there's not really a bass line happening. It's more just this unison intensity with the rest of the band, this kind of wall of sound thing. And he's adding these pops in, playing more to the drummer, the rhythm side. And then during the verses, he's kind of just with more of the guitar riff. So he's kind of playing both sides of the more rhythm, rhythmic and I'm not going to say more melodic, but just kind of playing more of the riff here. I find it really, really interesting. Uh, let's go back and see what he did. That's great live stage stuff. Just to go, just to come down here and just go and just throw your hand up. You know, to somebody standing 100 yards back watching you at a live show, this looks more intense than just going. You got to put some extra motion in there. As long as it doesn't really interfere with what you're playing, you know, he's kind of doing it during the rests there. Just throwing his hand down. It's important live showmanship stuff, obviously appropriate for a music video of this caliber that's really intense. Uh, let's keep going. If you're going to do that stuff, notice how he always puts his thumb down first. That's a great way to kind of know where you're at. You just, you know, you can bring your hand in from anywhere. You know, whether he's popped way out here, he's coming way down. You can just plant that thumb and immediately know that you have the note you need right there. So this is part of the floating thumb technique. It's a great point of reference. Either when you change techniques, it's a great reset tool. And it's a great way to kind of also mute your strings as well. So you can tell he's got really, really solid technique. Floating thumb in tow right here. Well, that was in and out. Quick little two minutes and 43 seconds song. It was really great to kind of see Ryan's angle. So much thrown in, just such a short, mainstream metal song for the time. I mean, this was just part of the sound. He added so much texture. And one of the thing about Warwick thumb basses, really just most Warwicks in general, is that signature tone. There's less lows going on. These those MEC pickups that come stock in Warwick basses are very, they're very tinny on top end, almost more top end than you would ever need. And I kind of like that when I got my first stock thumb bass, because you can kind of dial up the treble when your strings started dying and you can kind of keep this sizzle, that kind of gurgle that's going on in the tone. You know, for this bass, I actually uh, abandoned their signature pickup placement. You know, Warwick's kind of have two bridge pickups instead of a neck and a bridge, but I moved the neck pickup a little further away because normally these two pickups are real close together. But when you move two pickups to the bridge like that, that's how you get that real cutting, that thin nasal tone that Warwick's was so known for. And again, he was one of the first signature artists, I believe, or one of the early few, certainly in metal players. I'm going to check out Soften the Glare next and do a video on that. Let me know what song I should do, but nice to really jump in and see Ryan's angle here for Mud.
uh, mud vein dig. I was going to say mud dig by vein. That's not it. Got my Berber ding in today. This is really great. Appreciate the recommendation. Cheers, and we'll see you next time.